everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, as you can see, I am all prepped for a straight pour. I cover my edges when I do a straight pour because sometimes the paint is a bit thin. That's how I get those amazing cells. Um, thinner for cells, thicker for stability. So I want instability. I want the Rayleigh Taylor instability to be specific. That is a law of uh, fluid dynamics. And that is how we get these cells. So I cover the edges first just to make sure that there's never any paint showing or canvas showing through. Um, I just have a little extra coverage going on here because I mixed up more paint than I need it. I forgot to do this part. Uh, <laughs> after I added my flow trawl. And once you add the flow trawl, it gets very thin uh, coverage. So I just mixed up a bit more just to do the uh, edges. The colors that I'm working with today. For this background color, I have a mixture of Liquitex Basics uh, Phthalo Blue, Titanium White, and uh, a touch of Payne's Gray, which uh, I don't know where <laughs> that ran off to. Um, these colors, my cell makers, are the Americana Decor Metallics in the uh, Deep Sapphire. In regular uh, Sapphire, that is just Sapphire, that is the brighter blue. And I have the matte metallics in soft silver to which I added a tiny bit of each of these blues, a tiny bit of the deep sapphire and the regular sapphire, just to give it a bit of a bluish hue. Silver can pull uh, a number of colors depending on the silver. So sometimes they can be a slightly green color. Sometimes they can be slightly yellowish even. Uh, so just in case I added a bit of that blue, that's a little trick that I use to make sure that all of my colors blend homogeneously is to add a bit of each color, you know, or one color to each color. You catch my drift. These paints are mixed one part paint to two parts flow trunk. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol to uh, the proper consistency. The consistency that we're working with is about a two on my consistency scale. It's making a mound, but it is disappearing pretty quickly. Leaves a slight trace, but the trace does disappear right away. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. That is that box right there. This is that particular painting. They have this little box right here is a tip for that particular technique. And then we have the color palette associated with that particular painting. And then these two boxes, those colors are designed to be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are, <laughs> get one without paint. There are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just use some of the colors. You can mix and match the color palettes with the techniques and wind up with uh, many thousands of combinations. Use these for acrylic pouring, of course, but you can also use them for any art form, bead making, crochet, even decorating your house. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. The first order of business is I'm going to put some paint in my cup. I always wanna make sure that I have enough paint to make my pour work. And then I will lay down my base coat 
and probably reserve a bit of my base coat to go in uh, on top of my pour, if I have enough. We shall see. Now this is a bit darker than the color that I mixed for the sides, that is okay. That does not matter as long as my sides are not white. That was my main concern. That's what you don't want. You don't want bits of canvas coming through. All right, my base coat is down and I'm just gonna give this a quick pass of the torch just to pop any bubbles that might be in that base coat and there will be bubbles. Because what happens is if you torch after you pour and you have bubbles in your base coat, your base coat color will pop up through your painting. Sometimes that can be a good thing, but generally I try to avoid it. Okay, now usually when I do these pours, I make the color of my background uh, close to whatever the first color that's going to be going in. So that would normally be like if I were doing this color first, trying something different today. So I'm having this match the mid-tone and we will see what happens. I'm going to start with the silver and then the mid-tone and then my darker color. Pouring from up high because I want this to blend. I want these colors to sink as much as possible. Again, from up high with that mid color. And generally, it will pull the next color or the first color that you uh, put in there. It'll push it down further. And now for the darkest color. And I have a bit of my base coat left. So I'm just going to put a bit of that on top gently. I'm not making this sink. I want this to be a layer. The best thing is when all of those cell makers are lying underneath. I get the best results when it is like that. So that's what we're going for. Okay, they're trying, the cells are starting to try to pop up. I'm going to do this in a slow ring pour. And we're gonna see what happens. Pouring slowly like this allows those paints to mix and blend and churn as you're pouring, but you will still get some neat lines. As you get closer, 
to the end of your cup, you'll want to get closer to your canvas. That will give you more control. Uh, I've got some dark color coming out here. That's what I want. I'm going to change directions with my swirl a bit. Changing it again. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the cells are already starting to do their thing. Going to pop the bubbles. So many bubbles created in this technique. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to let the sit for a moment and the cells are going to start to pop up. So, I could tilt this right away and I will get cells and they would probably be beautiful cells. And I'll get lots of pop-up cells at the end. Um, the ones that come up after you let it sit. But if I allow some of these cells to pop up now, when I stretch them, they will become gigantic. And so that's how the difference between getting those little, I think people call them pearl cells, the you know smaller, more uniform cells, and the big bolder cells that I'm going for here. Sometimes I want the bolder cells. Sometimes I want the pop-up cells. Sometimes I want the combination of both. Today, I want boulders. So when I first discovered this technique, um, the first one was video 16, 15, I'm sorry, video 15. That's the purple one that had the yellow cells that popped up. I didn't let that one sit for quite as long as I did on 15, or 16, I'm sorry. 15 was the purple with the yellow cells. 16 is the one that kind of looks like the Eye of Sauron. Uh, basically, they put the whole rainbow in, in there and I wound up with these crazy, beautiful uh, cells. What happened was my, uh, my torch wasn't working. And so I was troubleshooting the torch and all of that time that I was sitting there troubleshooting the torch, these cells were popping up. And I was just like, holy cow. When I was doing 15, I wasn't going for cells. I just wanted a gradient kind of uh, look to paint over top of. I was gonna put a portrait over top of it. And then I discovered all these crazy cells and I was like, wow. And then I tried it again the next day with a different color palette and got a completely different kind of cell, which is the ones that I call the boulder cells. And so all of these little things make a difference. How they go in the cup, what kind of paints do you use? How long do you let it sit before you start tilting? Uh, all of these things will help to determine what will be your final composition. Uh, and tilting also is a big, big factor in, uh, in how your composition is going to end up. Tilting is super, super important. So I think I'm ready now. I'm going to do this first. Usually I go for the corners first but I just want to stretch this as much as possible and try to keep 
my ring shapes wherever possible. And so we are going to tilt very slowly. Patience is paramount. If you tilt too quickly, your paint will roll over top of itself. Even if you have a base coat. And that's not what we want. And I'm not tilting off the edge, I'm just getting very close to it. Stretching this out, the more I stretch, the more cells I will get. The bigger the cells that I already have will get. And remember, to Center the weight of your paint before changing directions. Always be mindful of where the weight of your paint is. That is going to be where your paint is moving the fastest. That is where the weight of your paint is. And being mindful of that can give you a lot of control over your painting and your composition. And another good reason to tilt slowly is you don't want to explode your cells. You want to stretch them. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it back to center again before I start attacking these corners. And I think I'm going to come to this corner first because it looks like that one is setting up the best. And if you are mindful, of the weight of your paint, you can almost get corners when you're tilting. Almost. You can't get a full 90 degree angle, but you can get pretty darn close. Okay, going to do the side next or closest to me again. So 
Sorry, I know I go off camera when I tilt that far, but it can't be helped. Okay, so now those cells that are closest to me are now going to get super stretched and will probably look pretty darn cool. Again, bringing the weight back to center before I go after this last corner. Oh no. I think I want to tilt some more into this corner. I really like what's going on closest to me and I really want to stretch that out. And I don't want my center to really be in the center center. Okay. I think I'm gonna leave this be. I've got some cool rippling action. Normally that would bother me, but because it's like watery effect, it looks like ripples in the water. Probably 99 times out of 100, I tilt this corner off first. but I'm really loving these giant cells here. I mean, they're humongous. Wow. So I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna call back whoever that was. And uh, I'm gonna clean up, bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. This came out super cool. I mean, Check out those boulder cells, holy moly. Those are some of the biggest I've gotten. I may have well, one other time gotten them that size. That super cool 3D effect in those ripples. Normally, I would be very upset that this happened 
And I think that happened because that's when the phone was ringing and I started feeling like uh, a little pressured because I didn't know if someone was trying to reach me. And so I started tilting faster than I should have. However, because this is such a watery piece, it actually kind of works. Really cool cells on this one. There is the center. And I do think that uh, as far as the orientation of this goes, currently this would be upside down. I would rather have it this way, I think, is the way I would like for it to hang. But just to give you a little bit of a different perspective. Definitely a very cool piece, very peaceful. But that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Please do like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. Help me stay afloat in that uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar, if you feel so inclined. All of my affiliate links. I have links to Blick Art, Arteza, Amazon. And if you use those links, anything that you purchase off of those sites, I will receive a small commission of at no additional cost to you. That is a way for you to give back that doesn't cost you a thing. Also in the description box you'll find the link to my website ginadeluca.net where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. Uh, the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards are also available on Amazon of course. And also last but certainly not least you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there, post your art, ask your questions, get some inspiration. That is my spiel. That is it for today. I am digging this piece. Oh, those big boulder cells are just unbelievable how big they are. This is a 20 by 20 canvas, so if that gives you an idea, like, that cell is, you know, that's, the, that's my hand. It's big. But that is it. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.